I wouldn't do run out. I'll tell him. Also, uh, the uh, uh, brand too. Huh? Uh, uh, brand too. Let me make it easy. Do it a minute. Yeah. Have a little. Have a little. We have got it on film. He just will go down, around, back, and back in, and then I'll just kind of exit out the side door. And, and I, I got, a, I got a leash for you. Okay. Oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> How about you, Tom? You want them? I don't know. No, you guys do your thing. Okay, we'll see you in a moment. How about you, Tom? We'll see you in a second. Come on, you can make this for the guys. Yeah, yeah, they're As they say in the Army, seats. <laughs> uh, before I begin, I just want to thank the Oak Hill staff for being able to change the venue from outside to inside in a matter of a few minutes. They really did an outstanding job. It's one of the great pleasures of being a member here because the staff is so very, very good. Uh, I'm Bill Westerville. I'm chairman of the Hill of Fame Committee, and this is the 27th induction ceremony. And for all of us who love the game of golf, it's with great pride and joy that today we shine a spotlight on our honoree and illuminate more fully why he's so deserving of this recognition. Many of you know that the genesis of the Hill of Fame was given life by legendary member Dr. John R. Williams. It was given a voice by Dr. Williams' successor as chairman Marty T. Gullen who wrote, we look on the Hill of Fame as an institution where men and women may be honored for their fine qualities of heart and mind and their personal contributions to some phase of human welfare and uplift. Now, I would be very remiss if I didn't point out that since 1980, the third chairman of the Hill of Fame has been Bill Reeves. He has prepared and presented over half of all the induction ceremonies and has, as he does with all endeavors, conduct them with a grace and elan second to none. He and he alone has unquestionably been the architect for what the Hill of Fame has become, and I ask you to stand and applaud him 
for a job exceptionally well done for 30 years. I would like to now call upon the president of Oak Hill, Tim Thaney, for a few remarks. It should be noted that Tim is a third generation Oak Hiller and the second Thaney to hold the esteemed office of president. Tim? Thank you very much, Bill. On behalf of the Board of Governors, uh, management, staff of Oak Hill Country Club, I'd like to welcome everyone here to the Hill of Fame induction ceremony for Jeff Sluman. Uh, before we start today's program, I'd like to recognize the past presidents. There's too many to name, but in, uh, on top of Bill Reeves, we have uh, almost a dozen other past presidents here in our presence, and we thank them for their continued support of the club. We also have a few uh, special uh, guests that are here tonight, and if I leave somebody out, I apologize. I know uh, a few people that are here tonight that I'd like to recognize. I did see Rich Funky out in the hallway. He might have scooted out. Is Rich still here? Okay, he had to leave. Um, I've got Bill Napier here for Cheryl Denalfo with the County Executive, and Alex Udelson is representing the City of Rochester for Mayor Warren. Also here is uh, somebody we might recognize, our longtime uh, head pro, Craig Harmon's here. He retired in 2013, served as Jeff's long-term teaching pro, so we thank him for coming up as well. Uh, as president of the club, I find out that I'm uh, responsible for virtually everything that happens out here. Uh, that includes the weather, so I apologize. I'm doing a pretty lousy job. It looks like if we had done this an hour later, we might have been able to be outside. But uh, thank God again as uh, the staff has prepared us and move us in here. We'll have a great ceremony inside, and maybe we'll have time for a picture or two up on the Hill of Fame afterwards. Okay? Oak Hill's a special place, a uh, great history of hosting major championships and recognizing the champions of golf. And we're excited about our continued involvement with the PGA of America, both in 2019 and 2023, but that was last week's story. Uh, we have a long history of recognizing those individuals who've given much to the game of golf and to our club, and Jeff joins a long term, long list of dignitaries, and his dig this recognition is obviously very well deserved. Jeff just kept his career going, going strong on the senior tour. He's actually going to be down at the Dick Sporting Goods uh, event later this week. In fact, has to be there tomorrow morning. Uh, so he's got an active game, and we expect that he will be the champion of the 2019 Senior PGA Championship in less than two years. So, uh, <laughs> so congratulations to our local PGA professional, Jeff Sluman, and I'll be turning it back to Bill Westerfeld uh, for the formal ceremony. Thank you. It's been said that this hollow patch of ground that we call the Hill of Fame is small by any scale, but central to the understanding of Oak Hill and its members. For it is here where we may immortalize those individuals who have contributed to the game and left their indelible mark on the landscape. To paraphrase sports writer Gene Cooney, the list of Oak Hill, fame, Oak Hill, Hill of Fame honorees is eclectic and emblematic nonetheless of American golf history. Presidents, golf leaders, professionals and amateurs, great golfers and duffers alike each having returned in like measure what he or she has received from the game. On the magnificent trees that are on the hill, names that are attached with great reverence, names like Bobby Jones, Saracen, Zaharias, Francis we met, Nicholas Palmer, Player, Hogan, Annika, Annika, Nancy, Betsy Rawls, and more. Today these names still resonate with golfers and non-golfers alike with the same clarity and distinction they evoked during the prime of their career. Whatever is said, the undisputed fact is they are and were all great. I suspect that to attain greatness, one must endure the test of time, and they have done it, as has our honored guest. For Jeff Sluman, our 43rd inductee, the path to the Hill of Fame began right here in Rochester, New York. Now, we shouldn't be surprised, since it's been the, home, the, since it's been the, home, the hometown has been the incubator for careers of such notables as Walter Hagen, architect Robert Trent Jones, amateur standout Sam Rosetta and Donnie Allen, PGA professional Craig Harmon, golf executive Jerry Stahl, all, by the way, Hill of Fame members. Born September 11, 1957 to Doreen and George Sluman, it would soon become apparent to all that Jeff was a superb athlete and his prowess was not limited exclusively to golf. It may surprise you, but bowling was the sport that stole his heart. Now, if you recall, 
Bowling was the rage in those days, and Jeff, one night, rolled two 300 games in succession. I don't know about you, but that's pretty good. It was practice. <laughs> it was practice. practice. Ah, practice, right. Uh, but to be sure, bowling was not the game golf was. The game of golf is so difficult that it has been said repeatedly, it's never too early to start. And Jeff started at the age of four as a left-hander hitting right-handed clubs upside down. He was good at it. That's the surprising part. However, Brother Wayne, after reading that left-handers were burned at the stake in Salem, Massachusetts, <laughs> converted Jeff to a right-handed golfer, and he was on his way. By the age of 10, he was breaking 80, and since we're talking about the early years, it would be a shame not to unveil some family secrets. Now, there won't be a lot of bloodshed, but we'll have some fun. Growing up, Jeff's nickname was the Cub. If Jack Nicholas was the bear, Jeff was gonna be the Cub. And being the youngest of the, bro of the brothers, the boys always felt that Jeff got away with bloody murder until the day he was caught snowballing cars in a rendezvous. Now, the brothers wanted the death sentence, you know, but Father George took a kinder heart to it and said no. He gave him a strong lecture and that was that. It should be noted that the Sluman family has always been close-knit and supportive of each other. It might surprise you to learn each family member has been to over 120 tournaments following Jeff. It's also surprising that only Brad saw Jeff win and that was at the BC Open. Jeff is a vinophile, a very serious wine collector and his seller will attest to that fact. He's also a Formula One racing fan much to the chagrin of the Illinois State Troopers. He's a good friend of actor Bill Murray, which explains a lot. He's also a good friend of Doug Wines, which even explains more. <laughs> in 1977, at the age of 19, Jeff was the Rochester District Golf, cha golf Championship winner. And coincidentally, just a year after, it's coincident, excuse me, coincidentally, that was a year after his mother, the real town in the family, won the Women's Association Championship. In 1978, he added the New York State Amateur to his resume, and a few years later, headed to Florida State University, majoring in finance, an appropriate degree considering his soon-to-be financial success as a PGA pro. In 1972, Jeff earned his player's card, but it took him a few years to find his way. By then, wow. The first tour win was none other than the PGA Championship in 1988 at Oak Tree in Tulsa, Oklahoma. From then on, it was no stopping. Over the next 26 years, he won five more times and compiled earnings in excess of $18 million. In the majors, he has had top 25 finishes in seven Masters, eight U.S. Opens, seven PGA Championships. <coughs> Excuse me. In 19, uh, sorry, in 2007, he began playing on the Champions Tour and to date has six wins, nine seconds, six thirds, and just shy of $9 million in prize money. In 2003, 2005, and 2007, he was assistant captain for the President's Cup teams. Now, for his size, he hits the ball a long, long ways, an average of 292 yards with an accuracy rate of 83%, almost as good as his brother Brad. <laughs> <laughs> his scoring average is 68.3, and that's pretty astonishing. As they say, the boy can play. It should be noted that you don't get to the Hill of Fame on golfing prowess alone. It's character that sets the men and women apart from the boys and girls, and Jeff has it in spades. Locally, he was one of the driving forces behind the Hillside family of agency skin game, and he and Linda have quietly supported many, many charity, charitable organizations in the Chicago area. Further evidence of his stature is indicated by fellow PGA members putting their trust in Jeff as the representative on the PGA Tour Policy Board. Here is what a few of them said. Okay, it's a few of the PGA members and LPGA members and dignitaries said when told of Jeff's induction today. Tom Watson remarked, congratulations on becoming Oak Hill's 43rd Hill of Fame recipient. I have always admired both your personal character and the manner with which you play our great game. Your honor is most deserved. The Hill of Fame brings, me back, it brings back many memories to me and my family, and I know it will for Jeff and Linda. I hope you all have a great day with friendship, Curtis Strange. Former PGA Commissioner Tim Finchin said, I can't think of anyone who better epitomizes all the good with the game of golf, and this is a well-deserved honor. I have admired your energy and your attitude on the golf course for years, and I'm grateful for your service in shaping the direction of the PGA Tour as a former member of our policy board. Past Hill of Fame inductees include some of the most distinguished ladies and gentlemen in the game, and you are a fitting addition to this impressive list. 
congratulations and find his best wishes. Kathy Whitward wrote, most assuredly Jeff is deserving of this wonderful recognition. I remember my own and it was truly an honor to be among the greats. Please give Jeff my congratulations and many thanks for all he has done for the game. A great player, an inspiration to others. I know it will be a very special Jeff, a special day for Jeff, and I'm really happy for him. And finally, Nancy Lopez adds, what a superb honor that you will be inducted as the 43rd Hill of Fame inductee. That is truly a great honor. You will join so many great players on the Hill. You certainly deserve it. You have always been one of my favorites because of your sweet character. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> your competitive spirit, no denying that, and your professional attitude, no denying that. I hope you all have a super day, and I'm sorry that I couldn't be in attendance. I will be fighting to keep the Solheim Cup in Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> Take care and congratulations. Jeff, speaking for the entire Oak Hill family, I can assure you that we are all extremely proud of your extraordinary success as a professional golfer, but perhaps more importantly, the character by which you have comported your life. From all of us at Oak Hill, congratulations on your induction to Oak Hill Country Club Hill of Fame. Jeff, the mic is yours. No, I hit it that long or straight, but and my scoring average I wish was 68.2, but uh, I'll take it. Maybe it'll Just work this week. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all kidding aside, what a what a great day. Uh, we obviously wish we were outside, but uh, to the staff for putting this together so quickly, this is amazing. Um, I'd like to thank the Hill of Fame members, all the members of Oak Hill, invited guests Tom and Monica O'Brien, Doug and Rachel King. Martin Nucci from uh, Paychex, who's been uh, with me for as long as I can possibly remember. My family, friends, um, if I've forgotten anybody, my, uh, my apologies, but what, what a treat for me. Um, I'd like to talk about the first time I was ever at Oak Hill. I, was, I remember it like yesterday. It was 1968. My dad took me out of school. Uh, come to see a practice round for the U.S. Open. It had to be a Tuesday because all the guys were very loose and uh, friendly with everybody. So I knew it wasn't a Wednesday. Uh, after uh, playing in many U.S. Opens, you're a little uh, more focused on Wednesday on that. But my dad obviously wanted to come and see Arnold Palmer, Jack, and, and, and everybody. And uh, I had never been to a golf course like this. And we came in through Pittsburgh and parked on the Shockingly, looking back, parked on the West Fairways, which is kind of a head scratcher. I don't know, I, but I got out and I looked at the fairways and I said, "Dad, these fairways are better than the greens we play on." <laughs> and and that was probably the truth. Um, so we walked over and I, I had such a glorious day um, watching Al Geiberger. I remember he was. Uh, what was he at the time? I think his nickname was Mr.